everybody. This is Jack Benedict, and welcome to the Coach Paul Tortorella Show. We talk IUP Crimson Hogs football. What a day it was Saturday in a 77-14 to 14 win over Lock Haven. And a great day all around with uh, things happening. The weather was good, and, of course, the team now is in with a record of 3-0. and Toward To start with that, I mean, just the whole surroundings of what went on, concert, Hall of Fame day, football game, and this is what we were talking about before, before we talk about specifics on football, an event. Well, yeah, it was more than just a football game. Uh, you know, you, you could kind of tell we go to our pregame meal about 12 o'clock, 12, 15, over on the other side of campus, and there was a lot going on already uh, with the tailgates and, the, you know, all the cars in the parking lots and the flags, and then uh, obviously the concert, the Hall of Fame uh, luncheon, um, a lot of former players back. So it, it was uh, it was an event, so to speak. Yeah, good representation, former players. There were quite a few that were announced in between the first and second quarter. Yes, we've been, I, I tell you, we've had a lot of former players here the last couple of years come, come into a lot of different games. Uh, you know, some obviously can't make all of them, but uh, uh, I, I would be willing to say 40 to 50 at most every Saturday come back at different, you know, different times. Sure, that's great. Well, uh, the game itself, and we'll, we'll talk about that. And when it started out, Lock Haven really moved right. down the field, didn't they? And so we, we kind of forget that Shaq Jones strips and recovers a fumble or else Lock Haven might have been on the board early. They came out and uh, got in two or three different things that we hadn't seen before. Uh, ran a little trick gadget play uh, with two quarterbacks in the game. Caught us in man coverage. Um, so we were scrambling a little bit. Then on a third and eight play, they uh, checked to a run, and we were playing pass, and we were misaligned. So that gave them a first down, down on the uh, one-yard line. And then uh, we ran a blitz off the edge, obviously, and uh, Shaq hit the back in the backfield as soon as he got the ball because uh, they were under center. And uh, right before he put the guy on the ground, the ball just kind of popped up in the air and he wrestled it away and uh, we sold it. And it was probably, if you go back and look at it, it was probably 50-50 w- whether it was or wasn't a fumble. But, uh, you know, we've had some of them go against us, so sure. it was good. I mean, that was, you know, we'd have been behind 7 nothing right off, right off the bat. So, uh, you know, the negative is, no, you know, we stopped them, which was great, but then we had the ball on our own two-yard line, but we went on a 98-yard drive, so uh, things started to get going after the fumble recovery. They did, and it wasn't uh, too long after that that you got Mike Nash in the interception. So that's Yeah, that was another situation where they did get in the red zone again uh, in the first quarter. It was third down. We had, we had a, uh, a really good call for what they ran. And he played it perfectly. Uh, Nick Amadola covered the wheel route. He was all over with the running back. Uh, our boundary corner, Lang, the freshman, did a good job in press coverage on the uh, wideout, who was really trying to go pick Nick Amendola. And then we had uh, Mike Nash playing over the top of it, and he, he played it perfect. You got to secure the ball a little bit better when he's running it back, because he, he did fumble it. But uh, it was it was a big play. How difficult is it in coaching games like this? And you know, you want your players to do their best. They want to do their best, and then, and, but you don't want to embarrass anybody. But it's 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 nice when you win. It's just a difficult situation, though, isn't it? Well, we we you know we talk more about you know how we're performing and what our standard is, and you know in the second half we played most of our twos and threes. Uh, we expect them to to do the same thing that the ones that we run the same offense, the same defense, the same calls. Uh, you know, my theory on that is kind of when the other team stops running their offense, you know, that's when we'll stop running ours. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we know we have the ball and they're not going to get the ball back, we stop running ours. Uh, so, and, and, you know, we have to get our twos work offensively. You know, defensively, they're trying to score against us, so we're running our defenses. When we're on offense, you know, Jalen Reese, the receivers, our second offensive line, our running backs – you know, we need to get them work and to just run the ball the whole fourth quarter into a nine-man front with them blitzing everybody's not really fair either. So, uh, you know, you know, I and, and I've been at other places where I've been on the other side, and I really I kind of did understand that that like, hey, you know, as long as we're trying to score on offense, you know, that that then the other team, you know, shouldn't put 
put take a knee the rest of the fourth quarter. So, yeah. uh, but obviously, you know, with five minutes to go, we think they're not going to get the ball back. You know, we took a knee uh, and started running the ball a little more on the back end. But when it was third and ten, you know, we did throw the ball with about seven minutes to go and caught them. They they blew a coverage, so that's how we scored our our last touchdown. Yeah, eleven touchdowns on the day and and some names that maybe. IUP fans are not totally familiar with. Of course, Dwayne Walls has been around for a while, right. but uh, young Cam Soom and Adam Hauser in his first touchdown run, all of these guys contributed in one way or another, didn't they? Yeah, and, and you know, we probably, 35% of our practice, so I'd say probably about 30% of our practices uh, is repetition for the twos. So, you know, it's probably 70 30 in regards to the number of reps, our, our ones get in practice versus our twos. So that 30% in practice, it's important so that they are ready when it comes time to put them in the game. And that's why we rep them 30% of the practice. So, uh, we're prov you know, it's, it's providing a lot of depth for us. We, we, we had depth on offense. We even have more depth now. And I think defensively is where we've really kind of uh, added some depth with uh, playing a lot of guys in the second half who we weren't sure were quite ready yet. Now we feel pretty good that we, we do have a, you know, a group of about 18 to 20 guys that we can play with on defense. Yeah, boy, that, that really pays off. Uh, there's no question about the depth factor. Right. You have to be overwhelmed with what the quarterbacks are doing. You know, Quinton Maxwell goes in the first quarter right. in the last two games. Jalen Reese, second, uh, first half, second half, Jalen comes in in the last two games. But not only are they playing, but they're playing just so well, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can get to a point where you, you, you talk about the opponent and you forget about what you're doing, both good and bad. And, you know, I think there's, you know, as I sit down, I end up watching, obviously, offense, defense, and special teams. I mean, there will be 10 or 12 instances where something will come up, and I'll say, well, we won't have it that easy or that good next week or the week after. But there's a lot of other things that are going on during the game that that's just, you know, football, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, we're competing. Uh, you know, offensively, our quarterbacks, we've gotten great play out of both of them. Uh, we've been fortunate. Our top two running backs, I think, only have 51 carries in total the first three games. So they're pretty fresh. Uh, we've played six or seven wide outs continuously here in the first three weeks of the season. Uh, well, Walls and Carter and Kelly, uh, all three of them had good games Saturday. So uh, we, we've you know, we've got a lot of guys that we say, hey, we got to get the ball more to Dwayne Brown. We got to get the ball more to Justice Evans. We got to get the ball more to Samir Bullock, to McNeil. It's a, well, you, there's only so many plays in the game. So <laughs> yeah. uh, it's great to have the depth, and uh, we've been using it, but w we understand that, you know, things are going to be changing here, especially this week up at Mercyhurst. Well, that's what I was going to mention. And they start this week, one o'clock game at Mercyhurst. Here's a team that's two and one. Gave Shepard a pretty good battle. Had a big lead last week over Bloomsburg. And so, you know, they, they are in two and one. They've got a veteran quarterback uh, f four years, and they've got, a, they've got a good running back. Give me a little more uh, perspective. Probably what their defense is maybe not as good as their offense, would you say? Well, that? I, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm actually pretty uh, impressed with their defense yeah. at, at this year. They, they play hard. They're... They do a really good job of switching things up. They're very uh, disciplined. Uh, they're very sound. I, I think uh, they've got a veteran defensive coordinator who had been in Division I in the last three years has really done a great job, uh, you know, mixing their defenses up. They do a lot of different things up front. Uh, they don't make a lot of mistakes. You know, and offensively, you know, C Coach Schatzel, the thing that when you play against Mercyhurst, they're going to make you beat them. They're not going to have a lot of penalties. They're very disciplined. They won't. I think they have three turnovers in three games, and they've only given up two sacks in three games. So they don't have a lot of negative plays. They don't turn the ball over. They don't have a lot of penalties offensively. They're very disciplined. They'll have a couple wrinkles and gadget plays in there, like they do every time we play them, mm -hmm. that you got to be ready for. So you got to you know be honest with what you're doing on defense. But uh, they're they're always very disciplined, well coached. Uh, will make you beat them. You know, that's one thing we always say. Mercyhurst is, is a type of program that they're going to make you beat Mercyhurst. They're not going to beat themselves. Yeah, I remember the game with uh, Kurt 
Kurt Signetti, mm -hmm. the comeback, you guys had to come back. That was a heck of a game. Right. And I mean, they, and they were very good then, too. Right. Yeah. Well, and the thing I reminded our team of after the Lock Haven game in the locker room was, you know, two years ago, we went up there the 10th week of the season. We were ranked number one in the country. We were 9-0. and And we were in that locker room at halftime losing 10-7 up at Mercyhurst. Uh, so, and it wasn't a fluke. You know, they, they played a great first half. We didn't play very good, but it, it really wasn't a fluke. They, they, they whipped us in the first half, and then we came on and had a great second half and kind of got the lead and then took the game over. But, uh, you know, when you go through the games before we got into the playoffs, uh, probably Mercyhurst was, was the tightest, closest game we played that year until we got to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looking at um, the team and, and the young guys that you've been playing, and you had some people out last week. Give us an update on injury situation. At one time, I'm looking there, there was all these true freshmen playing. Right. You. I looked out on defense, the one situation. We had uh, true freshman linebacker, three true freshman secondary players. Yeah. So we had four true freshmen out there on defense. Uh, right now, it looks like we got McAllister that didn't play and Streeter that didn't play. I think they both have a chance to play. Mm -hmm. We'll see this week. Uh, they probably won't practice till at least Wednesday. A um, couple other guys, Geisinger may be back, uh, Dreher may be back. I think we have a chance to have just about everybody but Brian Williams. He had gotten hurt Saturday with an elbow. He'll probably be out for a couple weeks. How about Malik Anderson? He's fine. He got, got a, the wind knocked out of him. I got a little uh, scary there. Yeah, for absolutely, because, you know, he's our third running back, but he's our third down back. And when you look at Malik Anderson – for his production, for the amount of plays he plays, it's, it's, tr it's tremendous. I mean, he, he's averaging like eight yards a carry. He's averaging 12 yards a catch. He's, our, uh, he's really good in pass protection on third down. Uh, so, I mean, he's a valuable part of our offense as the third running back. And, uh, we, you know, we, we were concerned there, but he, he, he's fine. He just got the wind knocked oh, out of him more than anything. If you were to look at... A position. I don't mean an individual, but as a group, like defensive line or right. offensive line or secondary. What group do you think has maybe improved the most from last year to this year? I would say if I had to pick uh, offensively, I would say at wide receiver. Uh, not that our other groups haven't improved, uh, but I think we've we've taken a step at wide receiver. And I think defensively, probably the two Don guys inside have really taken a step. And I think our corners are playing well. Uh, JR's playing like he did when he was a sophomore. Mm -hmm. Streeter played very well the first two games. And then we used uh, Lang and Taval Brown on Saturday, and they both played pretty well. Uh, Taval Brown came in there and had, had a really good game. So, uh, and the freshman was out there, started the game Lang, uh, played a lot of plays. Uh, was involved in a lot of different plays, so he, he, he got a lot of work. So if I had to pick the three positions, I'd say wide out, the two inside Don guys, uh, with Shockley being in there. We really play three of them inside for two positions, which keeps those guys fairly sure. fresh. Especially when it's 85 degrees. And it was really hot Saturday, and I think we wore them out a little bit too in the second half. Uh, they were still playing with their starters, and we had our twos in there who were pretty fresh. And then uh, I just think the two corners have played uh, very well for us also. Let me close out with the two Dillons. Sarka sets a new record, 11 extra points mm -hmm. in one game. And, of course, uh, Grubbs comes on and you had him kicking off. So maybe just some thoughts about those two. Well, what happens is, is when you score a lot of touchdowns and you kick off a lot, uh, a long time ago there was a study done and a guy from the special teams coach from the Redskins said that Five kickoffs takes as much effort as one field goal. So wow. if you kick, if I'm, I'm sorry, one field goal, if you kick off five times, that, that's, that's like five field goals versus one kickoff. All right, so it takes a lot, kickoffs take a lot out of your uh -huh. leg. Mm -hmm. And if you score 11 or eight or whatever we scored last week, and the same guy's kicking off, that, that's a lot of strain on your leg. Uh, so after about the third kickoff, we went with Grubbs. He did a great job. The one he kicked out of bounds, but other than that, he and he ended up kicking into the wind a lot when we when we were scoring mm -hmm. going yeah. the other way. So uh, you know, 
I think we got two guys that we can use on kickoffs. Obviously, Sarka's our, our field goal kicker, but you got to watch when you work that. Like, we didn't even use Sarka last week in practice on kickoffs because we wanted to rest them. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, one kickoff is like kicking five field goals for, for what, what it does to your uh, leg. So uh, we'll go in, we'll see where we're at, and probably use both of them Saturday. Okay. Well, good luck. Uh, you know, the trip uh, up to Erie, it's uh, really for fans. It's not that long of a trip anymore. It used to be, but not anymore. And, you know, when you're winning and you're nationally ranked, there's a lot of enthusiasm, and uh, that's so great to see, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, and, you know, we've had a pretty good following up there to Mercyhurst. And, and the one thing that's great for the fans is at Mercyhurst, you're right on top of the field. I mean, there's nothing. There's no track. There's no – Right. I mean, you are right on top of the field. So uh, to the point where when you're going over things on the bench with players, the people in the stands can hear just about everything <laughs> you're saying. Uh, so it's a great venue to watch a game because you're, you're right on top of the field. And uh, so it makes it a lot louder than, you know, it probably makes it twice as loud as it really should be. Mm -hmm. It's not a really big stadium, so it's, it, it's crowded, obviously, because it's not a huge stadium. And it makes it feel like there's more people there than they're really there. And it's great for the fans because they, they are literally right on top right. of the field. Well, we'll have some fun. It'll be uh, a great matchup. Good luck to you. Okay, thanks, Jack. One o'clock kickoff from Mercyhurst. And, of course, uh, all the coverage coming your way this weekend. So uh, it's a great matchup. Uh, be a nice trip for you fans to come on up to Erie and watch IUP and Mercyhurst. For the coach, this is Jack Benedict. Have a nice evening.